Hi, I'm Misty Lynn Cawthon, Balance Body Master Instructor and owner of Dragonfly Pilates in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We're going to talk about plank on the body. It's always a little bit challenging to decide how we're going to progress from no body to standing to kneeling to one point to four points. So we're going to take this as a progression just so you really get how to evaluate who's ready for the next step. So I've got Christine and JT here, and they're going to demonstrate rocking for us. Go ahead and rock out and hold. Ta-da, look, you're, they're in their first plank of the day. You'll notice that they're nice and square. Their alignments, shoulders to hands, are nice and balanced. But what happens, come back, when we don't consider the width of the ropes? I always make sure the width of the ropes is set as closely to perfect as possible related to the shoulder alignment of the people that I work with. So I'd like for both of you to Rock out with your hands a little bit more narrow as it would be if your ropes were closer together. Yes, you see how much trouble, well, she makes it look beautiful, but at the end of the day, she's having a little bit of difficulty balancing between the two sides here, pulling in maybe a little bit extra on her weaker side. JT's shoulders have curled up around his neck. Neither of them are happy. Come back. <laughs> at the end of the day, what do we want to be able to do? We want to take them from that position and pick them up and put them on the floor so that they're in their plank as they would be if they were on the floor. So we're going to talk about that as we move into our next step. As we move down to the floor, we want to make sure the loops are set in the right spot before we get into the plank. We don't want anybody making adjustments while they're in the loops. So what I'll have these two do, you're going to slide the loops upward so that the short loop cups just below the knee, just below the bottom of the knee, not the center of the knee, there is a difference. So yeah, JT, let's come down to maybe about here or so. Excellent, Christine, and once you get those set, you'll lower down your knees and I want you to put your hands in them just to give them weight to make sure they don't slip and then tighten your knots, really important step, especially if your ropes are new. Looks good to me. Okay, let's take it down to the floor. So you'll set up on your knees, and I would actually say let's slide a little bit forward to begin. Make sure your knots are tight, like I've mentioned. Okay, now let go for a moment for me, please. Yes. So when they're setting up, you're going to want the loops to be behind them. If the loops are in front of them and they go to slip their feet in, they're going to swing and maybe be a little afraid. So instead, JT, let's have you slide a little bit more forward. Okay, and there are many ways to get into the loops. I prefer the simplest way. So put your hands down or put a hand down and slip the other foot into your short loop. I like the short loop because it's smaller and therefore it's easier to secure around the foot. It's a little less scary. And you'll notice JT is in shoes here, but Christine is not. Really, it's a preference thing. Some people are very uncomfortable with the loop across the top of their foot, so the shoes make it a little bit easier. Some people are more uncomfortable with the shoe on. So it really comes down to comfort for the student. Well done, you know these two are pros because their hands are set up underneath their shoulders. Again, we're thinking about where they were standing in the rocking position and we're bringing it down. So the shoulders are balanced over the center of the wrists, the hands are spread, the fingertips are heavy. My next step is always the hover. It allows them to get acquainted with their weight, with the lack of connection to the floor, and with the idea of, oh, I have to really check to see where my stability is coming from. So, friends, let's lift the knees up to a hover and hold. Sometimes I tell a story here just to make sure they're really engaged and come back down. Now, the tricky thing here is many people, when they lift up, they want to extend their knees just a little bit. I don't want that because I'm picky. So I'd like for you both to lift again, keeping your knees in the same position. What do you have to ask your abdominals to do to make that happen? Yes, and let's come back down. How'd that feel? All right. So we're gonna add on here. Now they've, they've, they've graduated. It's time to move on to the next step. So let's go into that hover. 
Now, pressing from the seat through the heels, take the legs long and hold. You'll see they have both traction their legs a little bit closer together. Bring the knees back under the hips, stay, and lower down. Let's do this again, but we're gonna keep the legs hip width. Ready? Here we go. Hover first. Make sure all of the connections are here and we haven't given up on the shoulders. Now slide the legs back, standing into your feet, hold, and slowly come back in, hold, and come down. So if that works out well, then we're ready to graduate to the next step. Now we're getting to the Shazam. This is where plank gets fun. So both of my friends are here on their knees with their forearms in the loops, and we have two options to see here. Christine has the loop back toward her elbow, which is going to be much more stable. The closer the loop is to the shoulder, and let's be honest, the closer the top of the loop is to the shoulder, the more stable you're going to be. JT, pressing for superhero status, has his loops way down here on the center of the forearm. This is going to be much, much less stable. And it's not a place I let people hang out unless they are super solid in the shoulder joint. Now I'm not saying that JT is not solid, but I am saying that I want him to enjoy this. So let's bring the loop farther back here. Yes. Now they're both in this position that I consider to be safe. So if I'm teaching a larger group, I can walk around and know that they at least have the support of the connection of the loop to the shoulder to keep them stable. All right, so for our first trick here, yeah, let's pull the elbows back a little bit under the shoulder. Don't move your tush though, I see what you're up to. Yeah, keep that right there, keep this lifted just a little, ha ha. So essentially, I wanna be able to balance my favorite adult beverage on their low backs. I don't want them dipping through here. It's tequila, by the way. So the other important point for me People like to come into what I call chicken wings. That's this position where the elbows are out. It's also less stable because the elbows have gone wide and it allows me to dip into my breastbone and give my neck a little bit of a rooster forward. Not so bueno. So instead, I'm always making sure that the back of the armpit is rotated toward the floor. So both of them are doing this quite well. Let's open you up just a pinch right there. Shoulder, elbow, wrist in a straight line. Yes, armpit forward, yeah, like that. Ho, ho, look at you, fancy. There we go. Now from here, we're gonna go into a plank. First, hovering actually. Let's hover first and hold. Lifting the knees up. Oh, and now things got really serious. And lower back down. And again, this is harder because I mean, we're suspended here. We've got no connection to the floor. So I really want you guys to think about the loops being the floor, which requires some creative thinking, but I believe in you. Aha. Here we go. Number 11 in the arms. Maintain that 11 as you lift. Up, pulling the rib cage up into your back. Hold, 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 and come back down. Now, a way to make this a little bit more comfortable, separate your feet to hip width. Yes. And remember, each leg has value, just as each armpit has value, just as keeping your ribs lifted into your back has value. Let's try that again. Here's your hover. Stand into your feet. Feel the connection from your seat down. Feel your low core lifting up and hold and come down. To up-level this action, you're going to lift this time and then keeping your connection to the floor, slide one foot and then the other foot back until you're in a full plank. Ready? Here we go. Lift, hold, slide one foot back, slide the other foot back. And we hold here and we're really checking into those armpits. And we're having great fun here. And we're sliding one leg in and we're sliding the other leg in and we're lowering back, actually sitting back into a child's pose. So your oblique slings here, super big deal. If you don't have that connection armpit across the body into the opposite inner thigh and even down into the foot, things get a little bit fancy, but not in a good way. So reinforce that idea of the oblique slings working for good and not for evil. 
We cannot delay any longer. It's time for four points. I heard that sigh. That was like a really <laughs> pregnant sigh. So the most challenging plank you're going to do on the Bodhi is a four-point plank. And that's just the basic version of a four-point plank. There's always places to go. So we're going to set up for that right now. I'm particular with the way the handles go, of course. So you're going to slide the handles down so that they are in line with the long loop, not the short loop. And I'll tell you why. I want the body line to be pretty close to parallel to the floor as possible. Is the angle nice? Yes, and sometimes the angle is better. But for these two super strong people, I'm going to slide the loop down so they get a, a more parallel body line. Again, you can make that adjustment as you need, but also remember, with feet in the loop, the higher the upper body is, the more likely the top of the foot is to slip out for this particular exercise. So let's check them out, make sure they're even, and of course, lock your knots. No slipping of the knots. I'd say, yes. You guys happy? Yes. Ish? Okay, so the body position does matter. We want to be under the anchors as if it's right at the waist level. The idea is not to have people swinging back and forth. So from here, you're going to put one foot and the, then the other foot into the loops. And again, short loops for stability. If it's a strain or a struggle to get into the loop, if the foot is too high, then shimmy the loop down a little bit. There's no harm in that. What you don't want is knee strain just getting into the position. Hold on, you can just toe it in here. There we go. You wanna make sure there's enough of the foot in the loop for the person to be secure. And you really wanna make sure that the ankle is long and stable no rolling in or out of the ankles as that's gonna put additional stress on the joint. So just do a quick little point of pressure into the hands to make sure you're not gonna rock. Right there, good, that's your central point. A little lift to figure out if they're going to rock or not is good, they don't have to go into the full action. So from here, all I'm going to ask you to do is lift into the hover, again, Hollowing the belly to pick the knees up. Higher, 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 yes. And then come back down. And can you hover without cannonballing, which is a different exercise altogether. Let's try again. Wide shoulders, armpits rotated forward. Come up into your hover and hold. And breathing is really important. Without oxygen, you will surely perish. And then come back down. Talking about the wrists quickly. So there's the motorcycle wrist grip, which is knuckles forward, or there's the knuckles down position, which keeps the joint space open here. It informs the rotator cuff a little bit better and it allows you to feel less dependent on the wrists. Read that as less wrist pain. This time you're going to go up into your hover, press back into a plank, but it's a controlled press. So there's no swinging, my friends, or else we'll have to do 82 more. Ready? Here we go, let's lift up. And hold, press out into your plank. Use your seat, use your core, breathe deeply. Cluck like a chicken, just kidding. Now, pull back into your hover. And then lower down gently. Beautifully done. I'm gonna ask for one more. This time I'd like for you to bring your inner heels together. Some will feel much more connected to their midline with the heels hugging together, and that may make the exercise more successful. So try it both ways with your students. Here we go, ready? Let's hover up, lift and hold, make sure you're set. Slide the legs away, keep hugging the inner thighs together. Stay, lower your tush, yeah. And now pull the knees under you without changing the upper body, stay as stable, and lower back down. I mean, can you ask for better demonstrators than these two? It doesn't get much better than this. Thank you so much for watching this video.